These aren't the stories your mother told you. No, these are the other stories. <laughs> It's important to us at The Other Stories to approach every story with sensitivity and respect for all cultures and backgrounds. This episode contains historical language and references that are considered offensive, including outdated terms for Native American individuals. Listener discretion is advised. The Other Stories proudly presents Swift Bear and Laxon, Chapter 2, The Meat Field, written by Richard Reynolds and narrated by Justin Fife. They call him Swift Bear. His own people turned their back on him on account of his being some sort of freak of nature. Faster than any horse born and the strongest son bitch I ever seen. Prone to visions of his heathen bear god putting him on track of unnatural abominations meaning nothing but harm. I'm Mark Laxon, previous uh, no-good cur, but seeking redemption. I partnered with Swift Bear to roam the land and hunt creatures from Satan's own asshole. This here story's from our early association. We'd already killed us a couple of bad bastards, but nothing could have prepared us for this. A vision told Bear to head north, so north we headed. Into the cold in our usual style, Bear running and me riding my mighty stallion, Thunder. After three days of hard riding in silence, I was close to losing my mind. So I started regaling him with some of my more interesting anecdotes. Before I started killing monsters and devils and such, strangest I ever threw down with was Dandy Joe, I yelled. Some asshole prone to taking liberties at cards. One time, I called him out for cheating, and meek as he was expecting I'm to fold like clothes, but the bitch stood, put his hand down his britches, and looked me in the eyes and forced out a turd. Bear stopped running, so... I halted thunder. Then he done pointed that turd at me and told me to make my move. Being a man of limitations that there was the kind of plum crazy I won't mess with, uh, lessen I wind up eating shit, uh, I done forfeited that game. Bear was looking sort of revulsed. What? That's entertaining. Bear cut in. You talk too much. Look, listen smell. I took a deep breath. Something was off. What is that? Smells kind of like a filthy coochie or something. Death, Bear says, and pointed up. No birds, no sound, but wind. Then, he's off again, faster than ever, and soon enough we gets to a town named Purity. That rancid stink was stronger hereabouts. Purity seemed to be a ghost town, but Bear, he could hear better than most see, so didn't have no trouble finding the people. He tried the doors of the little chapel, but found them locked, so he just done yanked them open where on the twenty or so folks inside screamed like all hell, looking half mad with fright. Whoa! I called out. We're here to help. Maybe. This here Swift Bear, I'm laxing, and dealing with evil business is our purview. So y'all need to tell us where all the people's at. We're all that's left, mister, someone hollered. Close the door! It's coming back! shouted another. I ain't no doors keeping it out. An old boy popped up. We're goners. All right, I shouted over the clamor. Calm your high-strung asses down, one at a time. The preacher stepped forward, scared as the rest. It, it's the devil himself, sir. He brings the death of all life. Christ alive, I interrupted, a mite frustrated. Can someone just tell us the facts of the thing? 
Finally, a lady stepped from the huddle and started talking sense. Things have been strange for a while. Uh, first the animals went. Uh, hunters were coming home talking about how the woods and prairies was hunted out. Big game, little critters, gone. Then maybe a month ago, word came down that Lago, uh, a town up north, had cleared out. Everyone gone without a word. Then, the same thing happened in Salvation, west of here. And they were in no rinky-dink towns, the old boy chimed in. They was big towns, lots of folks. We're all spearmen towns. The mining concern, I question. That's a big outfit, ain't it? Hundreds of miners? Thousands, the old boy corrected. And every camp empty. No more miners. No more business. And then there was that spell, the lady says. Then all the livestock from the farms disappeared. Then finally, a few days back, it showed up in town. The devil, the preacher crowed. Some sort of beast, the lady continued, like nothing I can describe. But it's twice as big as any man, and it can fly. Snatches, folks, the old boy added. Flies on out. Then, a while later, comes back for more. Ceaseless. And the ones that try to run, the preacher says, hysterical like, he gets them first, and... The side of the fucking chapel exploded, and that beast stepped in bold as shit. The lady weren't fooling. I ain't never seen its like. Tall, with two powerful three-jointed legs. It didn't have no arms, but a bunch of grabbers snaking out from its body and two huge folded wings on its back. No face, neither. Its whole head puckered inward like a giant asshole. The people scrambled and screamed, but Swift Bear, already drawn his trusty bone knives and was on the beast in a flash, burying its way in and cutting them grabbers. It wasn't having it, though. Its puckered asshole face blossom opened, and it screeched a screech that hit you direct to the mind. <laughs> Then, the some bitch bucked, kicking bear clear across the chapel. I pulled my dragoons, but them panicking folk kept getting in my line of fire. Tough to believe, big as it was, it moved faster than bear, snatching up five or six folks and its grabbers and headed out, its legs driving like pistons, the extra weight nothing to it as it hit a sprint. Bear was up and giving chase as I mounted thunder. Seemed like he might have caught up to him, too, but the beast leapt high, and its wings unfolded to an almighty span, beating hard and carrying it aloft even faster than it had been on foot. Bear didn't stop, though, and by now, I was riding thunder flat out. We weren't gonna let this ugly buttfuck get away with it, no, sir. After a while of hard riding, it pulled ahead and out of sight, but it was traveling as the crow flies, so we held our direction and powered forward. But the longer we rode, the worse that fetid smell got. It was all I could do not to quit and lose my lunch. Maybe two hours into the chase, Bear spotted something strange on the horizon. Jagged hills that curved round into the distance, but you couldn't just tell that they weren't natural. When Bear could make out what they was, it stopped him dead in his tracks. The look on his face that I'd loosen your bowels. Then he was off before I could say a word. We were near the top of him before recognition hit me. This hill and all the ones that rolled off into the distance was piles of bone, skins, pelts, and all kinds of awful. God damn, boy! I said as I tied a gag round my face to hold the stank back some. This thing I have never dreamed of, Bear said, seeming kind of scared. We fight creatures and men taken by dark spirits. This thing, I think, is not of our world. 
Well, it don't matter what it is, friend. It needs stopping. And then, for the first time in our association, I took the lead. Bear close on my heels as we skirted round a hill of bones. What we found on the other side was worse. It were meat piled so high and wide and stretching into the far distance like a damn cornfield, putrefying, stinking, goddamn meat. And atop of the nearest rise was the beast. beast, beast. <laughs> Them folk it took was long dead. We could only see but one of them left. The beast was focused on its work. It stripped off the poor feller's skin like it weren't even attached. And then it pulled all the meat from the bones, careful like. It took the waste to the bone hills before returning to its fresh meat. It was arranging it just so while a bladder filled on the back of its head. Then its asshole face opened and spewed out a thick muck that looked to be fusing the new meat to the rest, maybe preserving it some too. I seen about all I could take, and fool I am, pulled and shot. It only grazed its wings. It stood tall on its meat heap and screeched something awful. Bear took out its knives, but the beast didn't make a move. It started to slough off its own skin, which suddenly seemed ill-fitting. Its grabber's legs, then back, all the skin came off, the wings entirely. Then, the some bitch just laid down, still for a second. Then, a burst of thick muck geysered from its asshole mouth, covering itself and binding it to its meaty collection, leaving it deathly still. Well, shit, I finally said. Guess it finished its work. I sure do feel bad we couldn't save them folks. Bear shook his head, grave as a weeping Johnson. He knew there was more coming, and worse. It didn't take long to happen, neither. And as slow as I am sometimes, it took me a while to understand what was happening. The vast reeking meat field was moving. Damn my eyes if it weren't lifting up. A tidal wave of putridness rising into the sky, leaving a blood sludge swamp where it laid. Its huge segments pulled away from its sides, pushed themselves groundward. And that's when I knew they was fucking arms. The beast had made itself a giant humunculus, and it was bracing itself to stand up, slowly getting its disgusting festering legs under itself, rising up higher and higher. I've been to cities out east and seen some tall buildings. They was midgets next to this thing, and Christ, all that movement released worse stink, a wave which put me out my slack jaw stupefaction. I yanked down my mask to vomit like a champ. Then I shook Bear out of his own stupefaction. What the bastard shit does it want, Bear? And how the goddamn hell are we supposed to fight it? It wants death and devastation, said Bear, and then stopped to think. You shoot the bear's head. Don't miss this time. The beast, I says. The beast at the top. I, I can't make that shot, you ignorant heathen. There weren't no time for arguing, though. The giant took its first step, testing its balance. When the bulk of its leg crashed down to the ground, the earth quaked something fierce, and the looser bits of meat showered down. Me and Bear and Thunder raced off to get a better vantage, whereupon I took my rifle from Thunder's side, located the beast way up in that mess of meat, and fired. <laughs> Best shot I ever did make, got it square in its asshole face. For all the good it done, the homunculus lifted its enormous leg and we ran like hell, just knowing it was fixing to stomp us to mush. It missed us, 
but the impact sent out shock waves that caused them bone hills to spill on down. Ah, oh, Jesus, bear! I shouted over the crashing. What now? The beast spirit is the giant spirit now. We must kill the spirit. And how you propose we do that, huh? You distracted. I climb. I had more questions and objections, but Bear was already running up at its leg. He jumped up and plunged his knives into the gray meat, using them as climbing instruments. Making his way up, one stab at a time, that giant didn't like it none and stamped its leg again. Bear held fast and got out the way. It was about time I did my part. Getting thunder some ways in front of it, I emptied my rifle into the beast up top. It tried swinging a kick at me, but missed, only by a prick hair, mind you. Bear was making good time, nearly halfway up already, climbing like a gecko despite the meat being slick with a thickened blood and rot slime. I circled Thunder back, pulled my colts, and slowly emptied them into the beast's husk too, near getting stomped three more times. Next I seen, Bear was at the top, cutting away chunks of the beast, then the meat behind it. Some bitch was tunneling in, pushing himself into that flesh. I can't barely imagine how grim it was in there. I gagged just watching him. The homunculus must have knew the score, cause it was flailing wild. Until it weren't. It stopped dead, then started to topple backwards as Bear came out the tunnel, holding something. As the giant fell back, Bear was running and skidding down it, dragging a blade behind to control his descent. He jumped clear as it crashed down, sending out a hail of fleshy debris and a deafening wet thud. He hit the ground running, and I was close behind as an avalanche of meat barreled towards us, aiming to bury us deep in its foulness. We didn't stop till we was far away. It took a time before I could make eyes from vast ruination, but when I did, I got a good look at what Baird pulled from that giant. It looked like a maggot, but was hand-sized and had thousands of wispy strands hanging from it. Stink of death gonna be in these lands for a lifetime is my estimation, I remarked. What is that thing anyways? This is the beast's spirit, Bear answered. Spirit from a bad place. These are our enemies. They turn men to creatures and creatures to monsters here and on other worlds. Shit, son, I said. Sometimes I can't hardly understand you. That thing ain't no spirit. Come on, let's get you back to yon town. Ain't no son bitch alive and more powerful need of a bath. 